The doors to the Viridian Tea House are open once more. Hello everyone. I hope you survived your Thanksgiving. Mine entailed three separate Thanksgiving meals and silky chickens. Not to eat, but to play with. I always love playing with the silky chickens. Anyway, I hope you're doing well. I've got books and tea to talk about, so let's begin. But before I start, got some news. So this Saturday is the Denver Public Library Friends Foundation book sale at Fiction Beer Company in Denver. Come by, get some book themed beer and buy some books and just have a good time. I think the hours are from 12 to 6, but you can check out the website for more details. So once again, this Saturday, the Denver Public Library Friends Foundation book sale will be at Fiction Beer Company. And then this Sunday, I will be a vendor at the Mountain Toad Holiday uh, Event <laughs> Festival in Golden, Colorado. And that's, I think, from 12 until 5. So I don't know the other vendors, but if you go to Mountain Toad's website, I'm sure they'll have all the information ready and available for you. And then December 9th, I will be a vendor at the Denver Veg, the Denver Vegan Holiday Market at the Town Hall Collaborative, and that's December 9th. I forgot the hours, but as the date approaches, I will talk about it more and I will have the times. But I'm looking forward to that event as well. So as you can see, the holidays are gearing up, everybody's starting to buy presents, and uh, just a little, little news to, in case if you're trying to look for different events to do in the Denver or Golden area. So hope to see you soon. Right, so the first book was written by a French author that I'm still trying, I'm still getting used to. I read her first book, uh, Bonjour Tristesse, which is Hello Sadness, many years ago, and fell in love with it. So this is La Chamade by Françoise Sagan. And let me read the back of it for you. She was the mistress of an older man. He was the young lover of a famous socialite. They knew their love should never be, just as they knew it was inevitable. Here is Francoise Sagan's brilliantly sensuous new novel of love and desire. So I read this and it didn't resonate with me because the characters really didn't have any problems. They had a lot of money. They had a lot of time to spend the money and their only problems were oh dear, how can I continue living such a lackluster life? I saw it as lackluster. Um, the romance between the two young people, I knew it was going to end up the way that it was going to end up. But overall, like I just really wasn't impressed with, with this book. I mean, it, I'm, I'm glad to have read it. And I love the fact that I got a vintage copy complete with like, green line pages but it just didn't thrill me it really didn't again I'm glad that I read it but it just I finished and I went okay that's nice who cares so for La Chamade by Francoise Sagan it receives three pots of tea from Viridian Tea House I enjoyed her writing as with her other book but it just didn't grab it for me. So, and by the way, she she died on September 24th, 2004. And she's written, she wrote so many other books. So if you read Bonjour Tristesse and you're trying to check out other works by her, definitely check out, check out La Chamade. I, I, I would recommend it, but you might finish it and go, wow, that was it. I'm, oh, okay. It was just very meh. I hate to say it, but it was. But still, I'm glad I read it. So the next book is a work of poetry by a poet that I've never heard of, and I hate that. And this is the poet Charles Wright, and this book is titled Caribou. And let me just read the inside of it for you. Charles Wright's truth, the truth of nature, of man's yearning for the divine, of aging, is at the heart of the renowned poet's latest collection, Caribou. This is an elegy to transient beauty, a song for the stepchild hour, belonging to neither the light nor dark, the hour of disappearing things. 
and an expression of Wright's restless questing for a reality beyond the one before our eyes. Caribou's strength is in its quiet, wry profundity. It's good to be here, Wright tells us. It's good to be where the world's quiescent and reminiscent. And to be here in the pages of this stirring collection is more than good. Caribou is another remarkable gift from the poet around whose influence the whole world seems to be in kind of a medit the whole world seems to orbit in a kind of meditative slow circle. And about the poet, he is winner of the Pulitzer Prize, the National Book Critics Circle Award, the National Book Award, the Griffin Poetry Prize, and the Bolligen Prize for American Poetry. And he lives in Charlottesville, Virginia. And so I just want to say this is the first time I've ever read Charles Wright and I fell in love with the poems. Very quiet, very introspective, very pensive, but with a little with with light. So let me find one that I really enjoyed. Let's see. Um, let's see, what's one? Do 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 do. Um yeah, I'll just go ahead and read it. So this one is called Fortune Cookies, or Fortune Cookie, excuse me. The stars appear every night in the sky, all is well. The northwest wind that rattles the skirts of paradise comes forth from just below them. They are a river too hard to cross, it has been said. But the stars don't care, so snug on their blistering thrones giving the waters a glint here and a non-glint there. Every so often, however, they fall down, though all is still well, their crowns in a straight blaze to nowhere. These little lights through the fall-stripped trees would like to be stars. These lingering rhododendron blooms and white roses would like to be stars. But they are just earth father, fodder, excuse me, and program for rot and ruin. The stars are otherwise, above the wind, below the heavens. That seems a nice fit to me, not too cold, not too hot. Time and its peregrinations, a stop here and a stop there. And then one more. Um, let's see. That's a really good one. Um, bear with me. Yeah, I'll just do this one. This one is called Ancient of Days. There is a kind of sunlight in early autumn at sundown that raises cloud reflections inches above the pond water that sends us packing into the chill evening to stand like Turner's blobbed figurines in a landscape we do not understand, whatever and everything we know about it. Unworldly in all hours, it glides like the 19th century over us up the near hill and into the glistening mittens of the same clouds now long gone from the world's pond so long. This is an old man's poetry written by someone who spent his life looking for one truth. Sorry, pal, there isn't one. Unless, of course, the trees and their blow down relatives are part of it. Unless the late evening armada of clouds spanished along the horizon are part of it. Unless the diminishing pinprick of light stunned in the dark forest is part of it. Unless, oh my, whatever the eye makes out and sends on its rough road trace to the heart is part of it, then maybe that bright vanishing might be. Truly, truly exquisite poetry. And if you have read more Charles Wright poetry, I envy you because this one book alone just... It did something to me. I mean, as you guys know, I love poetry. And when 
some some poetry I read and I go, I'm not in the right frame of mind, but then other poetry I read and I just, it's like sipping the finest wine or the best cup of tea. You just, you want to savor it. And that's how I feel about caribou. And this does receive four pots of tea from Viridian Tea House. And I am... I feel very honored that I was able to grab a copy of this of this book and I actually got this from a library book sale. So you never know what you're going to find at a library book sale, but many thanks to Charles Wright for his beautiful, exquisite poetry. So now we're going to talk about one more book, but it's a book that I've written. So as many of you know, I am I'm really, really into writing murder mysteries. But one particular series is, it's my baby. I love it. So the first book, Jackie Verona, A Murder of Gypsies, and that's actually me. And then the second book, The Devil's Music. So now the third and final book, The Dance of Lilith, is now available. Many thanks to my publisher, Pro Se Productions, for working with me through this trilogy, and I, I couldn't be happier. Uh, you can buy the book through, you can buy this one through Amazon, or you can support a small business and get all three from me on my Etsy store, and I will sign the books too. So the back of the last book, Dance of Lilith, is Welcome to Moon City for the Final Time. Under the cover of night, a malevolent force in the form of a woman whirls into an unsuspecting city, bringing chaos, lies, and destruction. Yet it's nothing for author and sleuth Jackie Verona and her partner, Monica. T together, these two formidable, wo formidable women will do what they do best, kick butt and discover the truth no matter how deep it goes. And this, like I said, it's the third and the final story. Well, I take that back. It's the third and final book. There's actually going to be another story, but that's not going to be until next year. But if you have read A Murder of Gypsies and The Devil's Music and you're wondering, well, shoot, where's the next one? What happens? Dance of Lilith is the way to go. And I always say this, but I'm just going to say it. I had a I had a hoot and holler <laughs> writing The Dance of Lilith. I really enjoyed writing it and there's some twists to it. And um, if you read it, please send me an email at tgoddess74 at gmail.com and let me know what you think about it. But yes, you can order copies of the first, second, and third book through my Etsy store, or you can also go to Amazon and purchase it there. So, yay. <laughs> All right, so now to the tea portion, but let's start with the book, actually an author. There are several authors in my repertoire that I adore. And then there are some where I am completely obsessed with. And Marcel Proust is one of those authors where I am obsessed with him. But here's the funny thing. I've only read the first book in his series, In, in Search of Lost Time. I'm currently working on, the, I'm reading the second book right now, In the Shadow of Young Girls and Flower. Somebody called his work wisdom literature. This is not the kind of literature that you want to bring to the beach. <laughs> this is not the kind of literature where you, you read it for like five minutes here and there. Marcel Proust is one of those authors where you sit down, you make sure you're not going to be disturbed for at least an hour, maybe two. You make sure that you have something nice to drink, and then you open the book and you read. It is a look in, his words are a look into life and living and class structure and gender and love and death and sorrow and secrets and everything how to be a human how to live on this crazy roller coaster we call life and i think marcel proust is one of those few authors that absolutely 
I think, nailed it. Now granted, he was dealing with late 1800s, early 1900s, no, late 1800s, early 1900s France from a certain perspective, but I think his words ring true. I honestly do, throughout the ages. And if you've read Marcel Proust, then you kind of know what I'm talking about. I've always wanted to do a tea blend inspired by his work. There's so many books out there that deal with Marcel Proust, so many. But I wanted to honor him with the tea blend. And after off and on for several years saying, well, what about this? No, what about this? No, well, what about this? It actually came to me when I wasn't even thinking about it. So this is the newest blend from my company, Viridian Tea Company. This is Marcel Proust, Monsieur Proust Herbal Tissane. And the ingredients are elderberry, apples, cloves, and anise. And I brewed some of it. You can kind of get the gist of the deep purple color thanks to the elderberry. But I've actually tried this before and I thought this is worth making a batch of Madeleines and just in spending half a day <laughs> drinking the tea and eating Madeleines. So from me to you, here's a lovely cup of Monsieur Proust Fribble to Sing. I love the flow of the ingredients. So you start with, well, actually they just kind of switch. So the last time I actually steeped this, I got the apples and the elderberry, then the cloves, and then a nice finish with the anise, which I'm not a big licorice fan, but it works. This time I'm getting the cloves, the el it's cloves, elderberry, apple, anise. And I noticed that the further down I get in my cup with the herbal tisane, that's when the anise actually starts to come up. But again, even though I don't care for licorice-y, like I'm, I don't gravitate toward it, it's still, works well with the elderberry apples and cloves. There's no, excuse me, excuse me, I just burped. There's no caffeine in this, so you can drink this all day, all night. But this is, this is for Marcel Proust. This really is, and I am so happy that I finally have a blend in his name and in his honor. So once again, from me to you, Monsieur Proust. Oh, that's lovely. That is lovely. So that is all I have today. Uh, let's wrap it up with a brief breathing meditation. You know the drill. Make sure that you have a cup of tea or a glass of water with you. We're just gonna breathe. We're just gonna focus on our breathing for a few counts and then I will send you on your way. So if you're ready, let's begin. <clears throat> Now let's end this breathing meditation with a deep breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. Slowly open your eyes or allow your eyes to come back into focus. And now let's have a sip of your water or tea. Just, wow, that's so good. That's really good. Many thanks to Charles Wright and to the ghost of Francoise Sagan, also to the ghost of Marcel Proust, to my imaginary characters, Jackie Verona, and as always, to you for watching these crazy videos and 
enjoying them. I hope you do. But that's all I have for today. So as usual, take care of yourself and each other. Raise your tea mug high. And remember that to drink tea is to enjoy life. I will see y'all really soon. Bye for now. And sorry for burping. <laughs> <laughs>